好，呃，那大家好，那我们下一场要开始。那下一场是 Open s e s a m e p o n i n g the State of Art State of the Art IOT Hub。那这场是由呃来自韩国的 j i s u p Kim 跟 Hong Young Lim 带来。那他们是韩国 BOB 呃出生的，对。那这场的话，他们就是会把一些 IOT 的 IOT 的 Hub， 然后还有 IOT 的装置，像那边有门锁，那他们就是会示范说怎么样，怎么样呃破解这些装置。那呃，接下来也会有 live demo， 因为看前面其实他们已经把给西都带来。那接下来我们用热烈掌声欢迎他们。Hello, h i t c o n and my name is Jisup Kim from South Korea. Today we talks about、uh, the state of the art, the IoT hub, hacking.、Uh, thank you for inviting me, h i t for h i t c o n And okay, here we go now. Okay, my name is Jisup Kim. I'm offensive security researcher in Korea, and I'm I like、uh, web security, embedded security, and I'm playing CDF with Team Swag. Hi guys, my name is Hong Yeol Rim. I'm offensive security researcher in South Korea.、Uh, I like embedded system and network security. Okay, we first. Talks about introducing the ID Hub, and then getting firmware, and thirdly, how we define a tech surface, and how to how we define vulnerability analysis, and finally, we talks about countermeasure. Okay, we will we will. Say about introducing the IoT Hub. You guys, do you know what is IoT Hub? IoT IoT Hub is a router for connection of the multiple IoT、uh, multiple IoT devices called as things. IoT Hub can connect and control things quicker and easier. And is it it is used to construct a smart home network or Automated smart factory. So why we hack the IoT hub? According to the Forbes, the IoT market continues to grow, but it is going to be a lot of trouble to manage all of things respective, respect, respectively. This is will this will necessitate a management system that can control a large number of things. At once, thus, the market share of IoT hub such as Smart Things, Wink,、uh, ine inevitably increases. Hub, all, hub is also a platform designed to manage all of things at once. Therefore, if you attack the IoT hub, all devices connected to the hub will be additional attack surface. So the attacker can dominate the home IoT network with a single exploitation. This table is our process of selection of vendors. First of all, we try to select based on market share, but we couldn't find the relevant data. Therefore, we selected Amazon's sales ranking that could be an indicator of customer preference. In addition, we also selected three Korean mobile carrier that are operating IoT networks business actively in Korea. Next, getting firmware. To get the firmware, we've got some tactics. Really, don't website firmware provisioning, zero communication, and so on. The first is that the firmware is released on the website. This is depending on vendors, but if vendor usually provides firmwares for manual updates on the homepage, you can we can easily obtain the firmware through this site. The second method is that firmware provisioning. Firmware provisioning is a word that tells. How to how to provide the devices 
devices with firmware to update. In case of the hub, in case of the hub, usually use SSL encrypted communication to provide an update to firmware. So you have a virtual SSL authentication server between the update server and hub, and you can interpret intercept SSL communication to obtain firmware during firmware updating. Lastly, serial communication, such as you know, such as JTAG and UART. It is mainly used for debugging embedded system. To extract the firmware through serial communication, you must either connect it to the custom shell or send comments to the chip. However, we more embedded devices security. Most embedded devices have not been able to extract firmware in these three ways alone. So we have two alternatives. And those are disordering and side channel attack. First alternative is disordering. Disordering is the remote the, remo the removal of solder and components from a circuit board for troubleshooting, repair and replacement, but use of too high temperature or heating for too long may damage components and board, so therefore it needs very skillful techniques. These pictures, are, uh, these pictures show uh, the results when we personally try, to, try the disordering, disordering technique. We purchased a dedicated socket and an interface board, and we tried to dump the NAND flash and eMMC. eMMC has a lot of data in the internet, so the former extraction process was not difficult if the disorder task was successful. But in the case of in the case of NAND flash, it was pretty difficult because we had to reproduce the controller role what MMC do. Next method is that we are introducing the side channel attack. Each device had a variety of hardware security techniques depending on vendor. However, we thought analyzing it individually and bypassing it was not efficient. Thus, because the IoT Hub is also an embedded system too, so we decided to analyze the boot loaders using most embedded system. According to statistics, most embedded, si embedded systems use U-boot or CFB boot loaders. And because most of the hubs that we are going to analyze are using U-boot boot loaders, so we are going to analyze the U-boot boot loader. At system booting, the bootloader initializes peripheral devices such as CPU, memory, chip, and enters the main loop function. The main loop function finally executes auto boot command. And if it success, the OS boots, but it fails, it returns a custom shell for the developer. When auto boot command is executed, the physical memory map is overridden by Linux kernel. So if an error occurs, auto boot command function returns the value without running the kernel. But main loop does not handle the return value when the, when the exception occurs in there. So CLI loop function is run sequentially and you would fall back to the custom shell. Thus, if an error occurs before loading the corner through a glitching attack, pin to pawn attack presented in DEF CON, the CLI loop function is executed and the custom shell is returned. As a result, we got CV number for that vulnerability and we've been able to get firmware from most IoT hubs in these two ways. Next, define attack surface. In order to analyze two vulnerabilities with extracted firmware, 
the attack surface must be well defined. So for these reasons, this requires detailed threat modeling and accurate, accurate understanding of data flow between hub and, the hub and server. Because most vulnerabilities occur in the user's input, we must draw a data flow first to specify how all data flows. Therefore, it is necessary to draw on data flow that can be applied to hubs in general. Data flow diagram from IoT devices to server should be detailed as follow to specify a text surface. Using defined data flow diagram, and then we analyzed where there would be a threat in the data flow. And we used Stride for effective threat analysis. Uh, Stride stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. And it is a method created by Microsoft to identify threats and to define threat model. Many security researchers are use, using it a lot these days. Finally, Using this, in the results of threat analysis, a total of 53 threats were derived. For more detailed threat modeling, we have created a tech library. A tech library is a tool that details threat model, threats about the system in threat modeling. So to build an attack library, we should collect a lot of suitable materials about uh, purpose uh, and, and usage. For example, send technique documentation and papers and conference and the vulnerability information and uh, CB, CWE and the vulnerability information release that OWASP were used in this case. As a result, we can draw an attack tree based on Stride and DFD we previously identified. The root node was set up as a case of attack on the, ho on the home IoT network. As smart device service, smart home devices were set up as follow, such as a troubled boundary in Stride threat model. Finally, we can identify a purpose of the attack and analyze the threats we define through these orgs. And by doing so, we can give shape to a plan about where we start specifically and how attack systemically the target. And then we are going to talk about some of the interesting one days that we have included in our attack library. This chapter is one day case study. Why did we do one day case study? Because we need to learn the most similar case to find more efficient vulnerabilities. Our team learned a lot of vulnerabilities by collecting one day case. One day case refer to vulnerabilities and research Reference reported by many companies such as Talos Rapid 7. Many of them we found at Talos. We found some conclusions from one day case study. First, we learned that found the most vulnerabilities in the use input function. Most of the functions did not verify their size. The most interesting vulnerability we have seen while running in MITM. On that part, we are going to get ready for a little magic show. Okay, let's start. What is our one day to introduce? We talk about two memory corruptions in the Samsung SmartThings Hub and a radio frequency replay vulnerability in the Eastern Hub. This vulnerability is found in the Samsung SmartThings Hub have been found in the Samsung Wi-Fi scan and Chris function. 
Based on this, it allows us to write input value without regarding user input size validation. Next introduced in one day case study is radio frequency for neuropathies. It is one of the most interesting case we have ever seen. So let's talk about this for neuropathies. First, it was memory corruption for neuropathy in Samsung SmartThings of Samsung Wi-Fi scan function. Most of function in Samsung SmartThings was passing JSON data. Then it was being used as string. This case was also same. Use parameter in JSON data was taken to user argument. Camera IP, password, callback URL were processed same method. However, while moving JSON data to argument, it used string copy function. So it means that copying many string makes memory corruptions. In Talos, they simply use the CURL command to write the POS code. If you write the payload instead of flat text, you can exploit Samsung SmartThings hub in Samsung Wi-Fi scan function. Second, it was memory corruption vulnerability in Samsung SmartThings hub clip function. It was the same, but a little different. In this case, instead of string copy function, it used string and copy function. At this time, size value was made by string length function using capture time JSON data. So it means that copying many, many string makes memory corruption. Parameter search as start time, end time, correlation ID, and callback URI were copied in the same way. This case exploits the same way like Samsung Wi-Fi scan function. If you write the payload instead of red color, you can exploit Samsung SmartThings hub in crisp function. Then last one day case we would like to introduce is RF replay for vulnerability found at the Instant Hub. The Instant Hub used the FSK communication protocol. Analysis of this protocol revealed that the transmission do not appear to encrypt or to, or to contain any security mechanism to prevent replay attacks. Using SDR, they captured the radio signal of the garage door, control device that open and close the door. Then they replayed the radio signal. As a result, then successfully found out RF was being replayed. This chapter is zero day. Through the one-day case, we found out um, many vulnerabilities such as memory corruption, command injection, SSRF, vector, and MITM. So what kind of vulnerability did we find? We found five types and vulnerabilities more than 10. We will introduce memory corruption, vector, and MITM in Hitcon 
コミュニティフォーファースト We will introduce code exclusion and vulnerability in the admin page. We were able to verify that process called Go Ahead was running in IoT Hub. So we analyzed the Go Ahead binary. While this binary tries to log in, it copies arbitrary suggestion cookie. This value is a d o m a i n session value. At this time, this value is copied to string copy function. So, it means that copying many strings makes memory corruptions. We try to modify the session value using p r o x y to f i d e r a As a result, we could see a segmentation fault error in the go ahead binary. Expert code was written to verify these vulnerabilities. And then we got reverse share. Second, we found Packing replay vulnerability in the 3MPD binary. When IoT of control things with a smartphone, it sends command. At this time, IoT of sends packet to things. So we analyzed this packet for turning, and, turning on and off smart frog and lights. By comparing packet of things, We found that command class and timestamp value were different. So, after that, we open IDA and start analyzing to 3MPD binary. We found routine that compares the same value as the command class on smart frog. In addition, we found through command code another. Routine that control things packet. So we did an experiment. We send m o t i f i c packet to control smart frog. After we got the uh, received data, we discovered that the packet replay was successfully. Sent. At last, we found vector vulnerability in Fender V. Before we talk about this vulnerability, we need to introduce this IoT hub that we analyzed. Unlike other hubs, this hub uh, using, used OSGI framework. OSGI is a dynamic platform based on the Java. Most of the functions were being used as Java bundle. Most of the functions, ah, most of the functions were being using a Java bundle. We were approaching in a new way because it was being processed in a different way than before. While we were scanning work port, we could see that service was running on port 8443. However, it was impossible to access. We analyzed the Java source code and found that we need the specific value. Which was the encoding of the IORI hub, the IORI hub serial key. So we access by using URL plus IORI hub serial key. And we got the login interface. 
The account ID was admin, the password was the mail address and serial key. Unfortunately, there was one problem. The mail address had two byte value that we could not deduce. Also, brute force attack was impossible because admin interface was disabled when login failed more than five times. We looked for other methods and found a special service that could change the MAC address and serial key. So we connect to the service, which is called MESD daemon, and analyze it. This service was created at factory to change MAC address and serial key. We start the analysis by accessing through the changed admin account. The most interesting feature is the plugin management function. We wrote the reverse shell bundle and upload it. As a result, we got the shell. The interesting point of this vulnerabilities does not stop here. You can upload bundles such as microphone, control, or control of things. This chapter is a scenario. So what is the fun part about this for novelties. We have made a scenario of hacking your home. Such as opening door, controlling program and prog and changing your door lock password. At this time we will show you a music show. How to how the door gets open. There could be a network issue during the demonstration. As we said before taking control of the IORI hub, the IORI hub gives a dominance over the things. IORI Hub is already set it up here. Uh, first, we'll start to the we'll start to control IORI Hub using memory corruption for narrowty. This IP is I your help and exploit. So little need times. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we got a root share. So we can 
bypass mitigation of the hub with root shell. Now we took over the IORI hub, so let's try to take over the smart door. It may feel too simple, so we will add random numbers. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> Can I ask your name? My name? Yeah. My name is Kang Yan Choi. Oh, Kang Yan Choi. Okay. Kang Yan Choi. Mr. Choi. Uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Ch Choi. Could you choose um, four numbers between zero to nine? You want? Oh, eight, two, four, six? Yes. Now, eight, two, four, six? Oh, door is crossed. Uh, Maybe I think this number does not work. Let's add this number. At this time, we are going to add number using MITM for vulnerability. Eight, P pardon, sorry, pardon. Eight, eight, two, four, six. Eight, eight, two, four, six. Yes. So, let's open the door again. Eight, eight two, four, six. Yeah, we have successfully opened the door. There was a network, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, and. And, and video is on the other demonstration. And control consent. And now control door lock. Please forget all of this. Attention, please. Say. Cheers. Okay, from now on, we will discuss how to prevent these security faults of hubs. What we felt when we were hacking the IoT hub is that 
it is difficult to find vulnerability in products that has a bug bounty program. However, the vulnerability of product that not operated a bug bounty program could be found more easily. Therefore, I can say that you can eliminate the security threats that exist in the hub in advance via hackers. So I think the best way to prevent the hacking of the IoT hub is to start the bug bounty system a program. Because most of hackers just hack for fun. Of course, money and honor can be a reason for that too. Anyway, the vulnerabilities that are not discovered will be a new challenge for hackers and will make them a challengers. And they can also make money by finding a new bug. Moreover, we think that developer, developers can significantly improve their security of products via the bug reported by hackers. If they learned through the collected bug report, their security level would be improved too. In addition, they can make hackers around the world your helper. Of course, if they provide them with a reasonable price. <coughs> Lastly, conclusion. The IoT hub is getting safer, but there are still many vulnerabilities in there. The vulnerabilities that are not discovered will be a new challenge for hackers, and it will provide developers with an opportunity to improve the security of their products. Thus, cooperation between hackers and developers could create the world safer. And it is a challenge we all have to try. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So you found backdoors in some of these devices, right? Sure. Um, how common are they? Like, uh, you look at 10 devices or five devices, yeah. and like, how many of them did you find backdoors, and do you think it is intentional? Oh, actually, many devices have some backdoor for updating firmware. Uh, I can say exactly how, how many uh, devices have backdoors, but uh, perhaps uh, half of them have backdoors. Well, so half of them have yeah. a backdoor that you don't even need exploits. You just yeah, so walk straight through. Yeah, it is. It was easy to exploit. 我听到说，刚才问他说有多少的这种 IT IoT 的装置，他他在这个研究的时候发现说有后门的，就发现说大概有一半左右，所以其实是蛮恐怖的，就一半发现说是有有后门。呃，那呃，还有人有有问题吗？If you have any questions, feel free to email on my Gmail or message me my Twitter. Yeah, feel free to contact me. Yeah, let me let me. Thanks for your demo, and I. I saw um, there's a FactJS. Uh, is the FactJS is the uh, server you make the uh, IoT device com uh, communication to your uh, FactJS? Sorry, I can't. Pardon? Um, during your demo, there's a FactJS uh, server. Factory server? Am I team server? Fake server? Oh, yes, fake, fake server. server, yeah. yeah. Uh, is the fake server that uh, I, uh, you make the IoT device communicate to. Yeah, our fake server uh, connects between hubs and servers. Am, am I just MIT server? Yeah. Oh, uh, 
uh, you made a fake server that sent a comment to the IoT device or something like that, or it just listening to the radio uh, or uh, sniffing. Um, so you have a fake, fake server, right? Yeah. And then um, IoT connects to the fake server? Yeah. Okay, so um, the fake server does not connect to anything else, right? Sure. And then um, when you try to, um, try to hack the device, um, you will issue commands to the IoT server through the fake server, uh, sorry, IoT device through the fake server. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, is, does that answer your question? Okay, yeah, great. Um, so let me see how we done. Okay. 我呃，我我们大概还有还有一点时间，所以还可以还可以再问问题。对，啊，还有人有问题吗？那呃，我再我再问一个问题好了。I've one more question. So, um, do you think like if we want to protect the devices, do you think、yeah. we should like prevent people from dumping the firmware? So there, there's the firmware in there. Should we like、uh, strongly encrypt the updates to make sure that it cannot be intercepted?、Yeah. And can we? Should we like disable the JTAG ports,、um, do secure boots, and、uh, prevent dumping firmware? Do, do you think that's a good tactic? Ah,、uh, yeah. Ah,、uh, I also have a, a lot of things of them. So you, you means that. How to protect of dumping the、uh, dumping firmware from the board? Yeah.、Um, do you think it is a good idea to protect against this kind of attack?、Uh, maybe actually,、uh, the per perspective perspective of the dumping dumping firmware.、Mm -hmm. uh, a good method is that、mm, firmware encrypting、But、is better. Yeah, firmware encrypting is better. I think, and you know,、um, uh, yeah, you know, Lux encryption, Lux L U K S encryption. Oh, okay. This most better、uh, method for protect the firmware, I think. Okay, so you would recommend the vendors to apply L U K S, yeah, full disk encryptions in their firmware. Yeah, our perspective. Okay. Thank you. 那呃，我们大概如果大家还有问题吗？如果没有问题，哦，还有一个。嗯、um, uh, ，Could you give us some suggestion that、uh, how to make the device、uh, trust the server、uh, they communicate to? Because、uh, you just show us.、Uh, You can have a fake server and hijack the、uh, communication between the、uh, IoT IoT device between the original server.、Uh, not not original server. Just fake server. Any 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 suggestion for the mechanism to make、uh, IoT device trust、uh, the server is the correct server, not a fake server. Uh, so what you are asking is,、uh, how do we prevent the fake server attack scenario, right?、Uh, so, like you, you, you use a fake server, right? Yeah. So how do you prevent against that? I think SSL pinning, you know, pinning、SSL. is the best best method, I think. So.、SSL、pinning. You will have like a public key certificate,、sure. the CA,、uh, that that you pin the CA's、yeah, PAC, fingerprint in into the, the device. Oh, yeah, devices. So that when you establish a TLS connection with the server, you verify that that exact CA. Yeah, exactly.、Um, does that answer your question?、Uh, yeah, we can have done. We can check the TLS and the certificate. certificate. But according to your demo, it seems、um, you already have a server and、uh, can 
uh, you can also, uh, for example, make another uh, correct cert um, a true certificate uh, signed by the uh, CA, and then, but the certificate is a different certificate, but it is. Uh, by the way, I want to say is okay. I understand. I understand. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> okay. That okay. um, 还有人有问题吗？没有的话，我们大概就时间也差不多。好，那我们呃，再次用掌声来欢迎欢迎他们。呃，不，掌声来谢谢他们。<笑>